Okay, so a couple videos ago I suggested that thanks to the FNAF AR email dates that security breach if Vanny is supposed to be possessed, that it would have to come before FNAF 3. And while some of you are accepting and appreciative of that theory, many people I seem, should I say, hesitant to accept my ideas and propose that quote I actually do some research. So I did. And I'm here to say that I found it, baby. Greetings gamers and welcome back to Top 10 Gaming. I'm Connor Monroe and this is my FNAF theory, the missing link that proves the security breach timeline. Let's do it. Now just to go over things first, what was my original timeline proposed in that last theory? Well, it starts with FNAF 4 in 1983 that we see thanks to the TV in Crying Child's house. Then we see the 1985 part of Into the Pit, followed by FNAF 2 and Freddy Fazbear's grand reopening in 1987. FNAF 1 takes place after that in 1993, calculated by Matt Patton in his first theory video, as well as being confirmed by a Faz fact from FNAF AR. Then comes Into the Pit with the present day, at least the present day in the book, and I'm including Into the Pit because time travel would technically be required and Into the Pit is what introduces time travel. And then we run into FNAF AR. Now the FNAF AR emails have dates ranging the game from 2019 to 2021, which I'm guessing is dependent on when you are actually playing the game, since it's meant to be the present day. And since Security Breach is linked to special delivery via those emails and NES along with the other weird happenings, we can reasonably assume that Security Breach would come next. Then we have to fast forward two years and see FNAF 3 with the Fazbear Frights attraction and sister location happening simultaneously thanks to the secret sister location ending. And to end the current timeline we have FNAF 6, Ultimate Custom Night and VR happening one after each other. However, we only know that FNAF VR takes place at least four years after FNAF 6 thanks to the man in room 1280 from Bunny Call, the most controversial point in this timeline being FNAF 3 taking place after Security Breach and AR, which a lot of people seem to have issues with. Obviously, there are some discrepancies that need to be made when talking about the FNAF timeline, since as Scott sees the story play out in his mind, previous moments may not align to a perfect fit, so information that is revealed later should be taken as a priority, like Matt Pat stated in his most recent timeline video after Ultimate Custom Night's release. So the, they didn't find Springtrap until night two of FNAF 3 would have to be replaced with them discovering Springtrap sooner than we thought, but only releasing him later on while trying to test to make sure everything was working before opening Fazbear's Fright, so that he could then appear as a character in Special Delivery, maybe perhaps as a way to hype up the actual location. But there's another problem that I want to address, saying that we have seen a Spring Bonnie time travel before, like in Into the Pit. So time travel is not out of the question for this scenario. There also seem to be quite a few people who believe that FNAF 3 takes place in 2013, since we know that the FNAF 4 location closed thanks to Crying Child getting chopped. So 30 years after 1983 would be 2013. However, the description for FNAF 3 states that quote, 30 years after Freddy Fazbear's Pizza closed its doors, the events that took place there have become nothing more than a rumor and a childhood memory. Meaning that the establishment was indeed called Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, and to our understanding that bite incident from FNAF 4 actually took place in Fredbear's family diner, thanks to the limited number of animatronics as well as them both being gold. While yes, other Freddy Fazbear's locations at this time were open, this incident did not occur at one. And this begs the question, does FNAF 3 rather take place in 2017, after the FNAF 2 location closes? Well, if we look back at that quote again, we know that that's not the case. Since it says itself that quote, the events that took place there have become nothing more than a rumor and a childhood memory, which couldn't be the case given that the FNAF 1 location that takes place in 1993 wouldn't be open if that's really what happened. If the 1987 location was the last one to close, it would make sense, but there being another Freddy Fazbear's open in 1993 means that the tragedies have not yet become a distant memory, especially since they're posting news clippings about the original incidents on the walls. And even if we didn't put them there, someone else is posting them on the walls a prank. Sure, the hallucinations may be what causes them to change, but they they're not the reason they're actually on the wall. We can still see the articles when we aren't hallucinating anyways, like in the first few nights. So why do I think that FNAF 3 has to take place after Security Breach? Because there seems to be a lot going on. Hell, what I'm saying now could even be pointing towards Security Breach taking place in the 80s if you look at it a certain way. Since, thanks to Montgomery Gator, we have all the proof we need. 
take a look at the characters in the background of the Happiest Day minigame from FNAF 3. The ones in color at least. They have various different masks on that are each pretty much explained away thanks to the mediocre melodies introduced in FNAF 6. Pig Patch, Orville Elephant, and the Hippo Guy. However, there are a couple outliers even with these other animatronics. The first one being the very first guy on this lineup who's wearing a green mask, which absolutely could be referring to Happy Frog, but that doesn't look like a freaking frog to me. Are you kidding? Frogs don't have those kind of faces. Even animatronic ones would not have a snout that goddamn long. A frog's face does not come out to here, people, okay? You know what does though? Alligators. And who do we see in Security Breach? A green alligator with a long snout. Who else do we see? A wolf who maybe seems to be the same color that Bonnie was, which as we learn is supposed to be blue despite looking purple. And what other mask do we see that doesn't have a mediocre melodies equivalent? A blue mask with a snout like a wolf would have. Interesting. So. Are the two new main lineup animatronics actually present in the Happiest Day minigame? We can't say for certain after all because these are 8-bit, but it certainly makes a hell of a lot more sense now, right? Plus I don't care if it's a robotic frog or not, okay? There, no frog is going to have that freaking snout, okay? It's, it's not gonna be out here and it's not gonna be this thin, okay? That's an alligator. <laughs> So there we have it friends, the smoking gun that explains how Security Breach could take place before FNAF 3. Based on FNAF AR emails, the closing of FNAF 1's location, and the Happiest Day minigame, everyone who was telling me I was wrong in the comments can finally accept that it's a possibility. After all, it's just a theory. One of many that we have on the channel, so you should check out any of our other nearly 300 FNAF videos. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe that it's possible. I can't. Oh, oh my god. Yeah, I'm probably gonna cry. Uh, links up in the top right corner. I don't know which one it is anymore. Because I was I was pointing at this one, but then I thought it was this one. Uh, I kept pointing at this one, and it turns out it was this. So it's one of these two. All right. What do you think? And is there anything else that you would like me to try to explain about this theory? Be sure you let me know down below. And speaking of comments, I'm going to respond to some comments from previous videos. Purple Fox said, "I just call Crying Child CC because it's shorter to write and kind of sounds like a name." Even though I think the chance is high, he's called Evan. It's not confirmed, so I won't use it. This is actually my line of thinking as well. It, it's fine to theorize about the name, but until it's confirmed, you should be treating it as fact. And I also just write CC in my scripts instead of crying child because it's easier. I also have an acronym for the one you should not have killed now because Jesus Christ that's a lot to type. One Speedy Yoshi said, you don't understand a thing about Spring Trap or the man in room 1280 do you? That's just stupid. Well, considering how you went on to say that I don't understand that these books take place in another universe, I'm going to guess that you didn't watch that whole video or read Scott's Reddit post about the Fast Bear Frights books. Scott himself said that while they aren't in the same universe, they will help to fill in some blanks from the previous games. The man in room 1280 was to demonstrate that William was being kept alive by a spirit instead of dying in the Springlock suit that turned him into Springtrap, because honestly, you know what, him being kept alive by a spirit is way cleaner than having a dead body run around. It also showed us that he was being tortured in his own head for Ultimate Custom Night and that the kid who possessed him is male, even though that last one may be a little iffy. And if you read the second to last page or so of the Freddy Files updated edition, it says to take a closer look at the novels to see how it affects the story of the games as well. So uh, I suggest that you watch the whole video next time before commenting, since I'm pretty sure I mentioned those. And even if I didn't, those statements are openly available to all and are in MatPat videos. So you, you should have known about them, because Considering how most of you are only here because MatPat isn't covering FNAF and hasn't been for a while. Gamer Pro Action said, hmm, you still haven't talked about that glam rock Freddy is Michael Afton. I, I have mentioned that in a video before. Well, that he represents the older brother, whoever that ends up being. And if that is the case, Gregory would be Crying Child, but then Crying Child is hiding inside his older brother. Like how the brother is a recreation of the Crying Child in robot form. And that's how I mentioned it last time too, so come at me. Golden Master said, Security Breach is after all FNAF games. Look, I'm happy to be proven wrong when the game actually comes out, okay? If that's the case, then I'm happy to rework the timeline again. However, if that is the case, we'll have to ignore everything weird that's going on in FNAF AR, since at that point those emails will be like six years old, at the very least. And in that case, Ness cannot be Vanny. Based on the dates in AR, it, AR comes before FNAF 3, so 
Ness, it cannot be Vanny if Security Breach comes after all the games, I'm just saying. But either way, even if that is the case, it doesn't explain how FNAF AR has versions of Springtrap, okay? Unless they were doing it to advertise the rise of Fazbear's Friday, like I was suggesting earlier. Hey, I'm happy to be proven wrong, okay? That's all the time we have for comments today. Thank you all so much for watching. I have been Inch, shall remain Connor Monroe, and I'll see you in another video. Thank you.